Hello everyone, welcome back to the video series on AVL software. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss Aero Console. Aero Console is a graphical user interface for AVL, and this is a piece of software that I have developed personally to make it a little bit easier to work with the geometry files for AVL software. Now, because the most usefulness of the Aero Console is for the geometry file design for AVL, we will be discussing the AVL geometry files as well. And that should help with understanding how to create new geometry files from scratch and where to look for additional information if you need help with that. So what is Aero Console? Where can you get it and how can you use it? These are some of the topics we will discuss today. But let's first start with what Aero Console is. If you have worked with AVL, you know that its user interface is very much a console based or a DOS based system, meaning it doesn't have that much of a graphical interface to work with. Particularly, it can be difficult to work with if you are using it as a first time user or it is for your first project that you are being uh, exposed to this software. So as I have been teaching the course that uses this software for students, I realized that it may be helpful for students to have a little bit of visual help as they are designing their aircrafts. And that is where all this started and I started developing this piece of software. Now, where can you get it? Let's go to where you can actually get this piece of software. So I'm going to start going over where I would usually go. So I will go to my website, go under teaching, go under the course that it is used and go to this link. It's an open source software that is available on GitHub. So in the description, you see that the program is a graphical user interface for Mark Trella's Athena Vortex Lattice and XFOIL. And it is originally developed to help the students here to dynamic performance course at the University of Windsor that I teach. Since AVL and XFOIL are beneficial, free and powerful tools, this software is supposed to help you with working with those pieces of software easier and more visually. Now, how can you get it? This software is only available for Windows. Unfortunately, at this point, that is the only platform or operating system that it works on. Where you can get it is from this link, which basically directs you to the releases web page on this GitHub page. And if I click here, I can see the latest version that is available to me. If I click on Aero Console, it will give me a warning. As you can see, the warning said that this software is not commonly downloaded, so it may be risky. The reason is because I have developed this. It's not developed by a corporation that is developing software every day. And because of that, as a way to protect you as a user, the browser is giving you a warning. So if I click on this and I say, I want to keep this, it will give me additional warning, which means, are you sure you wanna keep it? I still wanna keep it, I say keep it anyway. So after all of this, it downloads it for me. Now, once it's downloaded, I can go to where it's downloaded, which is in my downloads folder. So as you can see here, it is one single executable file. Now this file includes everything else needed to run all the material that you need to work with. So it does include the AVL executable files inside this package. And every time you open this file, it will extract all the required files in the same directory or folder, and it will run them as you would need them. Something to be careful with when you're running this piece of software is that you need to have admin rights or the folder you have this file in needs to be where the file can read and write information to your system freely. 
because otherwise your system may be blocking it to extract files or run certain tasks and this may give you an error or does not run properly. So make sure the folder it is in is a free read and write folder or you have admin rights for the system that you're working on and running this executable file. Now that we know where to download it from, we will get back to this later. And let's just go back to the GitHub page that basically shows you the overview of how this software looks. So in the main page, you see that it has the same interface as the AVL. You can directly communicate with AVL through this and what it does, it will basically communicate with the AVL in the background and gets all the information you need for you and shows them here to you in this interface. But as I said, the main advantage of this piece of user interface is the graphical user interface for geometry design, mass file, and the run files. So as you can see, there is a big difference between how you can type or generate your AVL geometry files in this interface than a regular text editor like Notepad on Windows. So it actually makes different colors for you, indents the different sections, and also gives you some warnings and help as you work with it. We will go through that as we go through the software tutorial uh, shortly. So that is one of the main features. Additionally, as you're preparing your geometry file, it generates the three 2D views in the YX, ZX, and YZ planes of your geometry file. So you can see how it will look for you. So that's another advantage of this. It also has the pieces of the script that you need to generate all your AVL, mass, and run files in addition to help files for each of them. So you don't have to know exactly how to insert things. It will insert a template for you and then you can start modifying the templates. It also has a tooltip help. So any keyword that you have in your editor, if you hover your mouse over and wait for a tooltip text, you will see that it will retrieve the information from that particular keyword from the help file that is provided in AVL documentation and shows you only the relevant information for that piece of keyword where it is being used. So it will be much easier for you to find helpful information and use that to your advantage. It also allows you to see the trefs views and the geometry views in the AVL. So it basically connects your geometry file that you're designing here to the AVL in the background and then plots the AVL in 3D as you could do in the AVL itself and then show you the graph directly. Also, if you want to see the different nodes that you're working on, it will highlight them in the editor as you highlight over them in the graphical interface. So you can quickly see which section you need to work on if you need to change certain aspects of your design. It has multiple layouts, so you can work on just the editor and or see different views from your 2D planes. And there's additional help here as to how, what are the required files for AVL and how you can use them. And I will be adding to this over time as I expand this, but this is the overview of the basic features and the advantages of this Aero console over the original Mark Drella's AVL executable file. So now that we went over this overview, let's go back and see our file. Another notice to give here is that as you are working with Aero Console, I'm going to just double click to open the file first. So I'm going to double click 
it is opening for me. If you are running it for the first time, it may give you additional warning to, are you sure you want to open this file? This may not be safe because it's not downloaded commonly and all of that. If you get that warning message, and if you want to use the software, you have to say, yes, I want to use it, so please let me use it. And after all of that is gone, you should be able to see here this interface. So in here you see the main screen is basically what you would see as you open the AVL. So here you see the messages, and in the text box below here, you can type your commands, and as you type them, it will show you the interaction. So for example, here, if I want to enter the upper menu, I can type here upper, press enter, and it says there is no configuration. That is because I haven't loaded any AVL files or geometry files in this, so I cannot go to the operation menu. So first I have to load something, but I don't have anything here yet, so we will get to it afterwards. And you have the file menu, which you can open the current directory if you want to see all your files. Tools, which is the geometry design, which we will get to shortly, and that is used for the geometry file, mass files, and the run files. Restart console, which will basically restart the connection with the AVL in the backend if there are any issues as you're running the software. In the display menu, you can change the font size and font name to your liking. So sometimes you need to do tutorials and you need to have bigger font sizes. This is where you can do it. And in help, you can check the about form and also check for updates. So another feature of this piece of software is as I will be generate, developing further and extending the features and fixing some of the bugs and issues, I will be posting updates. And if you go to check for updates menu, you can see the new updates exist or not, and whether it's going to download them. So if I click here right now, I have the latest version. So it will just tell me that the version is up to date. You don't need any updates and it will close the update screen. Otherwise it will up update it for me and restart the application. So now that all of this is done, uh, we go to the geometry design because we need to start with a geometry design. So I'm going to open the geometry design and what you see is this interface. To get a better view, I'm going to maximize this and let's just start with the top left. So here I have a project name and here is a drop down menu that you can actually edit. By default, it is test. And if you see the title bar, it says we are working on test. I can change this name if I want to change it, for example, to my own plane or plane test one or two or whatever. And whatever name you're using here will be used in this load save menu to load and save the respective geometry, mass and run file. These are the things you will be using together to run a specific analyses or experiments. So this will help you to keep track of what file you're working on and when or where to save them and load them. The default directory that this program will save and load files from is where the executable file is. So for example, right now I'm running my executable file from the downloads folder. All my files that I'm working with here that I'm creating in this error console will be saved and loaded from the downloads folder right now for me in this case. Now, if I have additional AVL or geometry files, this will populate a list of all available AVL files for me or geometry files for me in the executable directory. So I can quickly jump between them, edit them and save them and test them. So that is the load save menu. Then you have add, which we quickly talked about in the information on the GitHub page. So it basically, in the first section, you can add the geometry file template section. So you have the header file, the surface file, the section, and the control. And we will get to what these are. Then you have a mass template, then you have a run template, and the separator you can add just to make sure that your file is readable and you can separate the different sections of 
your code. Clear is to clear all the code you have here in the editor. In the help, you can see the full help document, which is basically the Mark Drellas full help text file. So if I click on this, I get the full help file open in Notepad. But also, if you need a specific help for the geometry, the mass, and the run, you can just click on the respective file. It will retrieve that specific section of the full document, and you can read further. And here you have additional file on how your files should be structured if you need to. And once I finish my design and save it, I can either say view the geometry in AVL window. So it basically saves my AVL file to the or geometry file to the AVL software, run it there and show me the geometry window in 3D. Or if I want to save a step, I can save it and then use AVL to see my geometry. And we will go through these shortly. We also have zoom in and zoom out. So you can zoom in to your 2D and zoom out depending on the screen you're working on. And you can increase the font size and decrease the font size again for viewing. And you can switch between the different layouts of the software, depending on what you're using it for, or if you need more space for specific view. As I am moving over any of these screens, you can see here it's showing the cursor. What is my Y value or Z value? Because I'm in the Y and Z. But if I move to the ZX plane, it's showing my X and Z, or in Y and X plane, my X and Y values. So this will help you to see where you are and what values you need if you're going to edit your uh, geometry file. Now let's go back to the presentation and see how an actual geometry file is structured. So we went over these. Now we need to talk about the geometry files. What is a header reference information? the concept of sections, input airfoil data, other useful features and keywords, and but about fuselage. So can we do fuselage in this or not? In general, you have, this is an example. You see plain vanilla. Plain vanilla is one of the sample files you can get from the Mark Trello package on the software website. And it is showing an airplane design that has a wing, a horizontal tail, and a vertical tail in 3D view. So when I was talking about the 3D view from AVL software, this is what I was talking about. Now, let's say I have all of this, but how is this actually structured? So each AVL geometry file has, at the beginning, a header file or a header section that has header or main information for that particular design. Next, it has surfaces. Each surface is going to be, for example, a wing, a horizontal tail, or a vertical tail. So each of these are their own surfaces. Each surface is now made up multiple sections. A section is a point, or you can think of it as a cross section, that you need to have at least two of for one surface. And once you have two sections minimum for a surface, what AVL does, it will connect the two sections and generates a surface for you. Now in this section, what I need to define is one in the middle and one at the wingtip. Now for this particular design, there is an option to duplicate everything about the x-axis. Now you see the x, y, and z directions as well as is the convention in the AVL. Now if I do that, whatever I'm creating on this side of the aircraft will be duplicated on this side of the aircraft or design as well. So I only need to define two sections and I will have this third section automatically generated. Now, each section itself can also have multiple control definitions. Now, for the controls, 
you need to define the beginning and ending of the control. So, for example, if you have a flap or an aileron, you need to define the information in this section as well as this section. And the control will be created from this section to this section. And we will go over that as we go over a sample. But the definition of the controls at each section will basically determine how long they are or in what uh, sections there they exist. That's how you can control the distribution or existence of the controls. Now for the controls, they're not mandatory, but if you don't have the control por portion in your design or geometry file, you won't be able to apply control in your analyses. So if the control surfaces don't exist, the AVL will give you warning that there is no control surfaces and disable some of the features. For example, if you need to bang or if you have to pitch up and down, it will tell you that I cannot do that because I didn't find any control surfaces in your design. So this is how it visually looks, the overall structure of a geometry file. But how does it look in code? This will be how it looks in code in Arrow Console. As you can see, it's colorful, it has indentation, and it has additional information. It won't look exactly like this if you open it in Notepad or if you try to type it in Notepad. And that is one of the advantages of working with the Arrow Console when generating this. Now let's match the actual sections to this part of code. The header section is this top part. So here you can have your plane name. You can have some information about the plane that we will go over as we go back to Error Console and go over these things. And after you have the introduction or header information, you start your surfaces. So here, for example, let's say I want to create a surface that is my wing. Now this surface has certain information here and you see it says Y duplicate. So this is the duplication I was talking about. And this zero means it's going to duplicate it about the X axis. And then you will have multiple sections. So here we only have one section, but for any surface you need a minimum of two sections to be able to generate a surface. And in the section definition, you see some information about the, the location of the surface, the length of it, angle of attack, and how you will mesh it for calculations or computations. Additionally, you can add the airfoil information. So Air AVL has NACA information or NACA data stored in it. So you can use it with the predefined NACA airfoils, or you can include your own airfoil data or other airfoil data that don't exist in NACA form, but they exist uh, and you can find them on, for example, Airfoil Tools website or other resources, depending on what your application for this software is. And the last piece is the control section. So as you see in this section, we have a control that is beginning. So this is a flap. And we said we need at least two sections to create a surface. So if I add another section after this, that will create my very simple wing, I can continue this. And I still have to have the same control information in the new section. So my flap will go from this section to the next section, which basically will be from the root of the wing to the tip of the wing. And that is how you can define the control surfaces. And as we go back to XFOIL, you see how useful it is to just hover over any of these keywords and see the information that relates to that particular section of the code. So this is the structure in how it, it, co it looks in code. Now, to practice this, we are going to try to create this example airplane. So this example airplane has a wing, 
a horizontal stabilizer. So this is the wing. We have the horizontal stabilizer or tail and the vertical stabilizer or tail. So the wing itself, this is going to be symmetric aircraft. We have, you see, so this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So we have four sections for this wing that we need to define the geometry of this wing. The first section or portion has a flap. The second one has aileron. And the last part doesn't have anything. We also have a stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, that has three sections or two parts and an elevator in the first part. And the vertical tail that has again two parts or three sections and a rudder in the first part. All the dimensions are given here, so this should be sufficient to create the geometry. And it says that all the values are in centimeters. So by default, the units for your geometry file should be in meters in AVL. So whatever we have here, we have to divide them by 100 to get whatever value we have in meters. So we will do that as we go to implement this. Additionally, it's telling us that all control surfaces are hinged at 0 0.8. So this 0 0.8 means if I start from the beginning or the leading edge of my surface, I have to go 80% or 0.8 out of 1 total cord length. And that is where my control surface is starting. So that includes this flap, the aileron, the elevator, and the rudder. Now, this is something that you can define when you're defining the control section in the AVL. But if you don't have controls, these don't apply. And this can be helpful when you're designing or how much control this can give you or how much effort you need in control. Additionally, we see the axes here. So we have the X along the fuselage, starting from the nose, going to the tail, Y going to the direction of the right wing, and Z that is coming out of the page in this 2D diagram. This is consistent with what we saw earlier when we were going through the AVL structure, which was here. So if you look here, we have X going from nose to tail, Y going to the right wing, and Z going upwards. So this is consistent. Now let's go back to this diagram and let's see how we can actually implement this as we want to do that in the Aero Console. So let's go back to Aero Console. So the first thing we need to do is for the test file, so we're going to call this test, and we need to add for a geometry file a geometry header or an AVL template. So I'm going to click Add. I'm going to click AVL template. Now with this AVL template, this is going to add this pieces of information, and I can change my plane name. I just leave it as plane name. I can call it Afshin plane, for example. I have the Mach number for the simulation. This is set to zero. But also, if I hover over certain pieces of information, you see that it is going to retrieve the help portion of the documentation provided with the AVL and then help me figure out what information is here and how I can use them. So if I look at this, I can see that for Mach, there is a default free stream Mach number for Prantoglard corrections. Additionally, if I go over anything else, I see that this is related to the header data and I can see what I can use this for. So we can see the I, Y sim, I, Z sim, uh, and Additionally, you have the S reference, C reference, and B reference, which are basically the reference areas for your wing, your cord, and your span. 
and all the other information you can add. So after you have your design complete, this is important to correct these to the values. For example, the reference should be the wing reference that you have or the surface area for your design, which you have to calculate after you have all the information for all the dimensions. For the chord, this will be the chord reference for your design and the B reference will be the uh, reference for your span. So if you see here in this template, I have the span is 10, the chord is 0.9. So multiplying these two for a rectangular wing will give me the reference of nine. So after you finish your design, make sure to update these values as you are going to start your or finalize your design and then test it in the AVL. And with these X, Y, and Z reference value, it basically means where should I measure all the distances from? This will basically start from the origin. So everything is set to zero. So the other thing that you need to note in the code, all codes for the AVL software, is that anything is starting with a hashtag or an exclamation point is treated as a comment, meaning that that portion of the code is not going to be compiled or executed. This is more so for you to add additional information for yourself to be able to realize what values you're going to do or why you did a certain thing in your code. So because of that, I have used these tag lines as begin geometry and end geometry, which basically gives me a portion to start including my surface section and control information inside. So this will hold all my uh, geometry design information. But also it gives me indentation. So I know that everything in here is going to be related to my geometry. So let's start with the wing. The first thing we said in our design was a wing. So we have a wing. This wing has root and then three additional sections. So the root is starting at 10 centimeters. So this 10 centimeters is going to be divided by 100 is going to be 0.1. So I'm going to start the first section of the wing and then we're going to start it for 10 centimeters and its chord is 30 centimeters. So if you go back here, I click in between the begin and end geometry tags and I start my surface. So you see that it starts the surface and gives it a surface name. So here I can call this surface wing. Once I do that, I can add additional information. So I have n chord wise, c space, n space, and a span wise and S space. As I hover over these again, it's telling me that these are related to the surface definition and it tells me what each of those are and whether or not they are optional. And the other good thing about this editor is as I'm going to change these values, you see that the spaces are corrected automatically. So the structure of the file is always kept consistent. This Y duplicate is what we discussed. So the Y duplicate was whether or not you want to duplicate your design and we want to duplicate it and we want to duplicate it about the X axis. And angle as it's showing us is the angle keyboard allows convenient changing of the incident angle. So here we put it as zero. We don't want to add anything else right now. So this is our surface wing, but we need to start with a section, which is the root. So we're going to say add section and we need to start so it is a starting from the note from the origin where the nose is and the wing is at 10 centimeters so that is 0 0.1 meter so i put x as 0.1 y will be zero because it will be on the x-axis and as i'm editing this Take a note of here what is happening. And as I'm hovering over these, see that the respective line on in the editor is highlighted. For the chord, it was 30 centimeters. So I need to change this to 0.3. 
and I'm going to leave other things as they are. If you need to change them, they will be useful for the accuracy and precision of the simulations you're doing. So if you increase these values, if you don't use them or change them, they will use the default for the surface. And if you need to change them for this specific section, you can change them here as well. And for this one, we are using NACA 2312. I can change this NACA number or I can put my own .dat file in the same directory that my AVL file is and then put that file name here. And this will just read the airfoil data from that, that file in that same directory as it's doing the calculation and running the analysis or simulation. Now, this is my first section. Now, in the first section, we also have another thing. What do we have? Let's go back. So we have a flap that is starting at the root and ending at the second intersection or section point. So we are going to start a flap here. So we need to add a control here as well. So we go and remember that they are hinged at point eight. So I'm going to go here in my section. I'm going to add a control. So as I add the control, I can see that it's called flap by default. I can change this if I want to, but right now we're working on a flap. So that is what it is. The C gain is telling you that is the control deflection gain units are degree of deflection over control variable. And this X hinge is basically what it is hinged. So we said it is hinged at 80% or 0.8. So I'm going to change this to 0.8. And this hinge vector is what is it rotating about? So this is X, Y, Z respectively. We are rotating about the Y axis. So I'm going to change the Y axis to one, meaning that it is rotating about the Y axis. And the sign D up is basically defining whether or not uh, this is going to be the same on the left and right hand side. So if it is one, it is going to be, for example, for flaps at the same time, they're all moving in the same direction. But for your ailerons, it may not be the same because on the left and right wing, it may be different. So I added my first section, I added my first control section, and then I go to the second section. So I add a new section. The X is going to start at point one again. The cord is going to be again 30 centimeters. But the Y of this one, let's go back to the design. So the Y of this in this direction is at 80 centimeters. So in meters is going to be 0.8. So I need to change that to 0.8. So I'm going to change the Y of this to 0.8. And you see now that from the top view, I have a rectangular wing. And from the side and front view, I'm just seeing the dots. Now, if I add elevation to my second section, so I change this set, for example, to 0.3, you see that from the front view and the side view, I also get views, but I don't have any elevation in this design, so I'm going, going to turn it back to zero. Now again, I need to add the next control, and this is going to be the same flap, gain hinged at 0.8, and the vector is going to be one. So this basically says I want my flap to start from this section and end at this section that will be similar to the design that we have here. Now, for the next portion, we have the next section here. So the next section is going to 
be at 100 centimeters and it will have 20 cord meaning 10 plus 10 is going to be 20 will be its X so going back to the design I need to add a new section so this one the X is starting at 0.2 instead of 0.1 and cord is 20 centimeter that is okay and the Y is going to be at 1 so what you see here is that now it is creating the next section but something we forgot to do in the previous section is we had an aileron starting from the previous section continuing to this section so we need to add another control in the previous section that is aileron and then continue it to this section so here I'm going to add another control So we had the flap, I'm going to call this aileron and then the hinge will be at point 8, the edge vec will be y axis and for the sign up and down because they're not the same on the both sides I'm going to add negative 1 so it's going to be on the left and right they are acting differently or in the opposite direction so I have that now that I have that, I just want to continue that. So I'm going to copy this with Control C and then add this to this new section with Control V. So this will make the aileron from the second portion to the third portion. So basically in this section. And for the last part, so for this portion, we have Y that is at 120 and then the chord of it is 10 so the start of it is from 10 plus 20 which is at 30 or 0.3 so we're going to add that last part so this is going to be add new section so the start will be 0.3 the Y will be 1.2 and the chord will be 10 so you can see I can have this at 10 or if I want to make it more futuristic I can make it look like this so you have control over what you need to do but this basically creates the wing that we had identified in our design and that will be the first surface that we have now for the second part we have the horizontal stabilizer so the horizontal stabilizer is going to be the same as wing so it's going to be in the XY plane so we create a new surface so first of all let's just save this so I'm going to save geometry test.avl it's a good practice to save your design once in a while in case your computer crashes or you lose electricity so you don't lose your design I'm going to go add a new surface I call this surface horizontal tail or edge tail I keep the defaults here and then I need to add sections so I add the first section and I go back to the design so this has this is a very odd plane design but this is 100 and this is 50 so it is interesting that this is actually bigger than the wing but we this should be revised anyways let's just go with whatever it is it's not going to be a good design but we're just going to implement this design 
it says we have 100 so we need to put 1 but it also starts at 150 so I need to put the start point at 1.5 and then the chord it says 100 I think it makes sense if it is more 10 but let's just see so we have the start of X at 1.5 to zoom out so you can see this here that the y is at zero z is at zero the chord it says it should be one but i think that's too big so maybe we just keep it at point one or we can keep it at point three and we don't touch the other things, the same airfoil. We also have an elevator here. So we need to incorporate the elevator with control. So we're going to add the elevator at control and then elevator. Again, it's hinged at point eight, and this is going to be tilting about the Y, and the sign is one. And we go to the next section. So this one is going to be the same start. The Y is not going to be at zero. So let's see what it is in the design. So it says it's at 50. This will be 0.5. And the chord was one, but we just keep it at three as we discussed. And we leave everything else. And we have the elevator again, so we're just going to add the elevator again. And we need the last section. So the last section is going to be this portion. So it says 50, but we have to reduce the size. The Y is at 80 and we don't have any control here. So we need to have this 80 and then for the chord it will be let's say 20 but this one needs to be increased so it goes back. So that is how the horizontal will look like and this will be our horizontal tail and then we need to add the last surface which is going to be the vertical tail and we call it V tail. Again we need three sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste all of this from the horizontal tail because it has the same structure and just change the data. So here we have the X, so the start of it will be the same as the start of the horizontal tail or maybe a little bit before that. But again, these values don't make sense. We just have to reduce them. But we have a rudder here instead of an elevator. 
So let's just put the values for this VTL. So we have 1.5. Let's just keep it where it is uh, for that particular section. The Z of it is at zero, the Y of it is zero. Chord is 0.3, so everything is there. So here, instead of elevator, we need to add rudder. What it will be rotating about will be the Z. So we need to change this to Z. And then the next section will have this one instead of Y.5, we should add Z.5. And then chord is three. Then again, we have the rudder. We have X hinge at eight and zero and one. This is rotating about the Z axis. I'm just going to double check the first section. So we have this Y zero Z zero. Chord is three. And we have the last section that it will be at x 1.6, y 0, z 0.8, chord 0.2, and we leave the same. So as you can see, we have a horizontal wing here, we have a horizontal tail here, and a vertical tail here. And I'm going to save this geometry. And I'm going to see if I can check this in the AVL. So when I click that, it will open this window for me and shows me this additional information, which means using the same commands I can use in AVL. For example, if I press L on the keyboard, I can turn this left if I press R on the keyboard. And basically I can see my design. As you can see, this particular aircraft was not properly designed. So even though we did some modifications, the tail looks much bigger than the wing. That does not make sense. Uh, but this basically is showing the overall applications of how you can use the AVL with Aero Console, design your designs, whatever you need for your AVL or geometry file. And usually when you're designing, uh, what you need to do is to make modifications or you need to make iterations. It will be very easy if you're doing it with this Aero Console because what I can do here is instead of test, I can put test 02. So you see this file name changes to test 02. So we are working on test 02. And then I can say save, and this will save it to test 02. Now, if I close this window, I go back to my geometry design, and I open the geometry designer. And if I click on this drop down menu, now I have test and test two. So I can go and open test, say load geometry, it will load the geometry for me. Or let's say in my second iteration, I figured that my tail was two. So first I'm going to load uh, test two. We are working on test two now. And I'm going to try to make the design of the horizontal and vertical tail smaller. So how can I do that? I go to my horizontal tail. I try to make these smaller. So I put this point two. Then point two. This will be point three. And then 
the next part will be point four. And this chord will be point one. Or we can just keep it as 15, for example, to give it a little bit of futuristic design. For the vertical tail as well, we're going to make this point two. We're going to make this point two, this point three, and then we keep this as point two, but then reduce this to point five. So this will give me a new design. I'm going to save this design as the second iteration, and then I want to see it in AVL. So because it's already open, it will not uh, properly run it. What I need to do is go back to my error console, go to restart console, and now if I do geometry view, it will open the new design for me. And it makes more sense now as we are looking at the new design. So this is just how you can go over different iterations of your aircraft. And then all of this can be imported into AVL as you add the mass file and the run cases and then you can run your experiments, run your analyses, and you will be able to showcase a comprehensive process as where you started, what iterations you went through, and what problems you try to fix or address. And after that, what is your final design, and then show its performance and how it's working. So that was a quick overview of Aero Console, how this can help with the geometry file design for the AVL software and how it communicates with the AVL in the back end to help you design your geometry files easier and more visually.